instruct us with your word. Let us find life in the areas that we need life. Let us find breakthrough in the areas that we need breakthrough. Let us find healing in the areas we need healing. Let us find love in the areas that we need find love. Because Lord, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever that believeth in him shall find eternal life. So may the love of God that comes from the world embrace us this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said, Amen. So today is, uh, today is the 15th and I'm sure from the 1st of December up until now there would have been many a preparation that you have been doing for Christmas. And we know that when we prepare for Christmas, sometimes I know the problem is when you have slides, everybody is looking there, nobody is looking at me. So, <laughs> the, uh, sometimes slides is a distraction. But, uh, so you have been preparing for Christmas and we know from the 1st of December, our airways are filled with the carols that are sung. And we hear a lot of stories. There are school carols, there are, there are uh, uh, things that you and I would have attended to and there are many characters of the, of the Bible who plays out the Christmas story. And out of all these characters today, I'm going to talk about one person who was a very integral part of this whole Christmas story but who is least spoken about. He is not spoken much because we don't much speak about him because he was not a star. But he is very important and he is Joseph, who was God's choice to be Jesus' earthly father. When God looked for a couple to be his son's earthly parents, he would have looked at a couple whose lives manifested the nature and the character of God. That's how God would have looked when his eyes roamed around looking for a couple who could be the parents of his son was to be born. So let me briefly list out what we know about Joseph. Sometimes you may know, sometimes you may have not even known about these facts about Joseph. Joseph's father's name was Jacob. And if I ask him, he might answer this because these are the questions he gives us in our cell meetings. His family's hometown was Bethlehem in Judea, but he lived in Nazareth in Galilee, which meant that Joseph and Mary had to travel about 75 miles in order to register for the census. So they lived far away from where they had to go for the census. He is from the royal line of David. The genealogy in Matthew 1 makes that clear. He was a carpenter by trade. He was a poor man. We know that because when Mary and Joseph presented Jesus at the temple, they offered turtle doves and they did have the riches to offer a lamb. He was a righteous and a devout keeper of the law, a fact we will observe more closely in just a moment. He was a just man or a righteous man is what the Bible says. So let's read together our main scripture today taken from Matthew 1 verses 18 to 24. Can everyone see this? If you don't, then you can go to the Bible. Matthew 1, 18 to 24. Shall we read together? Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child and of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, who shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sin. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, 
and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel commanded him, and he took him to his wife. So why did God the Father choose Joseph? He was not a rabbi, he was not a priest. He was poor and he was unknown. He had no family connection that we know of and yet with all these negatives what we would see from a world's point of view, God chose Joseph. So the question is, why? How many of you want to know the meaning of the name Joseph? Anybody knows the meaning of the name Joseph? The meaning of the name Joseph means God will give the increase, signifies the promised blessing of God for those who will obey him. And that's what's the meaning of the life and name of Joseph. So well, this story as we see which begins in Matthew 1.18, I would want to illustrate certain points out of the scripture that we read just now. So when the mother of Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with the child by the Holy Spirit. Mary and Joseph lived in Nazareth. They were betrothed and engaged to be married. Beloved, in those times, betrothed means is as good as marriage. We know that Venushka is now getting ready to marry. But in this case, when we say betrothed, betrothed is it's already signed. And one could not annul it unless they went through a divorce. And that was the meaning of being betrothed. Because they took vows, exchanged a dowry, and they did a divorce to dissolve this union. Even if the couple had not lived physically, intimately, they had to still go through a divorce. Because that's what betrothed means in that time. The girl, so what happens? The girl in loves and promises to marry, he suddenly finds her pregnant by another. He would have felt cheated, isn't he? He has been ridiculed and embarrassed. His plans and dreams would have been destroyed the very moment he found that Mary was pregnant. But in this moment of pain and confusion, we get a glimpse of the type of character Joseph had that I'm sure would have factored into God's choice of him as Jesus' earthly father. Beloved, before you and I face any situation in life, a circumstance in life, God already knows our heart, God already knows the character inside of us, and God already knows how you and I will respond to that situation because God knows. We may not know until we face the situation, but God knows how I could react in a situation that is most difficult to handle. So the first quality of Joseph's character that we see is Joseph was merciful. Matthew 119 says, And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send him away, send her away secretly. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says he was a righteous or just meaning that he wanted to do what was right before God and man in this difficult and painful situation. It was a very difficult situation for Joseph. It was a very painful situation for Joseph. Just take a moment to put yourself in Joseph's shoes this morning. If you put yourself in Joseph's shoes and if you had to, fa if you had to face a situation like that, how would you and I react in that situation? This quality made him react with mercy in this situation because he knew that God wants us to be merciful to those who hurt us. Proverbs 11 7. Because Joseph was a devout man. He knew the word very well. And Joseph knew what God's standard and God's expectation was from him even in this stressful, even in this painful situation in life. Now because he is a good Jew, he can't even marry a woman pregnant by another man because the law says in Deuteronomy 24, 1 to 4, read it when you go home. Even if he loved her, he was prohibited to marry Mary because that's what the law said. And that was the situation Joseph faced. So Joseph was left with two options. 
The first option was to publicly divorce Shane Mary and Joseph gets a good name. Because all of what he was doing was right. That's what the law says. And he could have easily done that. And the second option that Joseph had was to quietly divorce. Say Mary Shane, but live with people having a doubt of his integrity. You know, if he quietly divorced, people would have said, ah, he got a pregnant and now that he has left the Lord. So these were the two things that Joseph had to face. In choosing the second option, that brings his reputation to risk. We see his mercy and kindness towards someone that, that he may have perceived as the one who had betrayed him. Beloved, how do we react when someone betrays us? I'm sure every one of us has gone at some point to betray us in our life. People close to us would have let us down. But this morning, in the night of the life of Joseph, let's examine our ways before God and see how we reacted in those moments of betrayal. So the lesson one that Joseph's life teaches us is forgive rather than forgive. Imagine if you are in the shoes of Joseph. You were engaged and after a few weeks you had found out that your fiancé is already pregnant. By another, how would you feel? How would you handle such things? How would you handle your anger, dismay, frustration and most of all the desire to be avenged. Joseph could have easily invoked this law to his advantage because the law gave Joseph advantage. However, what did the Bible say? Joseph chose to forgive Mary. Instead of exposing the great sin of Mary, he wanted to put her away secretly to avoid public shame. In this situation, we can see the tremendous mercy that Joseph had shown to Mary. This degree of compassion is not for the weak, beloved, and for a spineless man. It comes from a strong man who chose to forgive rather than accept revenge. Sometimes we think it's a weakness if we don't fight it. If we don't, if we think it's a weakness if we don't say what we have to say because we were wrong. But the strength is doing what is right in the sight of God. Although the law permits for us to do what is right in the sight of God. I'll give you a quick illustration of example. When, when the time came for me to move out of John just because of certain things, even the even the law, the head of law, the head, head of legal John Kiel said, this is not good, don't give it. Well, why don't you fight it out? I, I could have, as for the law said, but I give it my insight for the law was. And I said, no. I will give my resignation. And that's the fact that sometimes we have to face in our walk with the Lord. And I know when I went through that, it was not easy. Because all inside me was shouting and out saying it's injustice, it's injustice, it's injustice, there is nothing wrong. Everybody around me was saying it's injustice, injustice, there is nothing wrong. But I have to make a choice. I have to make that choice before God. And have peace in the choice that I made. Beloved, how have you reacted? When faced with the far less similar situation, let's, let's take a moment to reflect. Let's take a moment to reflect and see how it is, how we have reacted in similar situations. The second point is that we see in the life of Joseph is Joseph was humble and he was obedient. The word of God says Joseph was used to hear God. Though a busy and a hard working man, beloved, I know every one of us here today would be busy and hard working in some form or shape. But in our business, in our working environment, in wherever we go, we can train ourselves to hear God because Joseph heard God 
in normal ways. Because God speaks to us in normal ways and we need to train our heart, we need to train our ears to hear God in normal ways. Sometimes we think we need to hear God to come for service. Yes, God may speak to us in the service, but God can speak to us even when we are taking a shower. So we need to understand that God can speak to us in normal ways and always keep an open heart, a receptive heart to hear God when God speaks. And that's what Joseph did. So that now God could get his attention about his own decisions. You see, when God starts speaking in normal ways and you and I have faced with taking a decision and when we hear God, God gets our attention. Then our normal ways. And that's exactly what happened when I had to make that decision at John Kate. My normal way was to stand for my right. My normal way was to fight for my rights. But when I heard the Lord, when I heard, because he spoke to me the night before, which I didn't even think till it happened the next day. <coughs> because God is never there. Because God will always speak to us and prompt us at the right time, at the right moment. Four qualities we see in the life of Joseph, which stood, which stood in good when he was faced with a very difficult situation and act in a manner that was pleasing to God. So you and I, we know that we will face difficult situations. We won't have a life where there is no difficult situation. If God's son Jesus who was born faced difficult situations from the very time he was born, will you and I not face difficult situations? Because sometimes we think by becoming born again and becoming a Christian, oh, all our problems are going to go away. No, it will not happen that way. We will face difficult situations. So if we learn from Joseph's four things that we can learn from his character, we can know how to face those situations that and also please God in our actions and in what we do. Number one, he was merciful and he forgave. Number two, he prayed and heard God's voice. Number three, he humbled and he obeyed. Number four, he was very reverent and he was also courageous to take certain decisions that he took in that life. Matthew 1, 20 to 25 says, But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived of is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call him his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep, and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but he kept her a virgin until he gave birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. Notice that once Joseph had decided on the plan to take, I told you Joseph had two options. He could have divorced her and brought public shame to her or divorced her secretly where he could have been questioned. And we know he selected the second one and not the first one. But after he made that choice in his heart, we can see God speaking to him and telling him what is all about that is happening in Mary's life. Beloved, sometimes we wait for God to tell us what to do. But once the we say, Lord, give me a dream. I want to see this. I want to start a vision because I want to do what is right in you. But what is right in the sight of God, beloved, it is given in the book of the uh, word of the Lord or the Bible as we call it. And as we take that decision in our heart, because God does not do what I do outwardly, God, God looks at my heart. And when I take that decision in my heart, God gives the word, God gives the dream, and God gives the vision, and God confirms what is to happen. God reveals to a dream the real reason of Mary's pregnancy and what he wants Joseph to do. Until then, God did not tell that to Joseph. But when Joseph took that right decision, God immediately gives him a dream and tells Joseph what he must do. In this sequence, we see a quality in Joseph 
that is really appealing to God. And I'm sure if you and I have this quality in our lives, ingrained and embedded, it will be always pleasing to God, beloved. And that quality is humility. That quality is humility. Now, humility is the absence of the desire to always impose, impose one's own will. But in our life, just think for a moment, in our day-to-day -day activities, even in our cooking, managing the house, or even in our workplaces, most times, we want to impose our own will. We want to impose our own will. We will say, no, this is why I did it. This is what it means. And we want to impose that. And that's what we need to be careful. Joseph had the right to complain. The child he didn't accept was born in a stable. Just imagine, he was told that God, my God, God, you are going to have my the, the, his God's son who is being birthed in Mary's womb. And what did it end up? He did not bring the child in a room, in a house. He ended up bringing that child, the child in birth, in a stable. He had to flee to Egypt after that because the king wanted to kill the child. He had to move again to Nazareth. How many times you and I like to move from place to place because of situations? I'm sure Sister Hiranti may know that when we had, how when we had to move church. Because how many of you were at Visaka Road long years back? We were all very happy at Visaka Road. But then came House of Fashion right opposite. And when House of Fashion came right opposite, we could not even park a car for the service. And we had to move. And it was not easy. It was inconvenient. So moving from place to place is not convenient, beloved. You and I know that. But Joseph had to move. He had to go to Egypt and move again to Nazareth. But more than that, imagine he accepted to marry Mary. And until the baby was born, he could not have any sexual intimacy with his wife. Just think a moment. Think a moment. It is not easy for someone to do that. Joseph could have complained. Why is it, Lord? You are telling me to do this. I have to do all that. But he did not complain. Joseph even had the right to demand special privileges. After all, he has been asked to look after God's son. How many of us think that we want to demand privileges because we are having something worth that we can give? We demand special privileges. In the worship team, we may demand special privileges. In the preaching team, we may demand special privileges. In the church, we may demand special privileges in our workplaces because we believe that we deserve it. How much more would have Joseph deserve special privileges when he was chosen to be the father of the Son of God? But he chose not to demand special privileges. He was given a task of caring for God's Son, but he remained poor beloved. He had to continue his trade of carpentry. His trade of carpentry didn't change. He had to continue that. Joseph could have complained. Because he had to still be a carpenter to earn a living to feed the Son of God. That's what Joseph had to do. But Joseph didn't complain. He gave up his rights, his demands, his needs in order to serve God's purposes and needs of others. In this case, it was Mary and Jesus. And today, you and I are called as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ and followers of the Father whom we want to draw close to. We are called to give up our rights, our demands, our needs in order to serve God's purposes and needs of others. That's what serving God means, beloved. That's what ministry means. It is not serving, self-serving, it is serving for another, for another cause. So the lesson two we learn from here is obey God and trust Him fully. In Joseph's situation, it would have been quite easy to follow what his heart dictated and moved humanly. And many of us, including me, have done that. We have moved what our heart dictated in moments that we were challenged. After all, he had every reason to put away Mary and even penalize, uh, penalize her for apparent betrayal. 
Thankfully, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 20 and 21. So the response of Joseph was, or if I ask, what was the response of Joseph? He obeyed God. How have you and me obeyed God when we were challenged in a situation around a circumstance that you and I face? When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and he took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she had given birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Every move he made pointed to his godliness. Every move that Joseph made pointed to his godliness. By marrying her quickly, he broke all Jewish custom, but he protected Mary's reputation. She was pregnant, he wasn't the father, but he married her anyway. He acted swiftly, even as God spoke to him. By keeping her a virgin until Jesus was born, he protected the miracle of Jesus' conception by the Holy Spirit against the slander by unbelievers. And thirdly, by naming the baby, he exercised the father's prerogative and thus officially took him to his family as his own legal son. And Joseph did that very quickly because he knew what he had done. At the time of confusion and much uncertainty, he simply obeyed God and put his trust not on himself, but God, God, beloved. So we also need to understand not to put the trust on ourselves and even our ability, but to trust God, although we may not understand why. When I had to take that decision, I did not understand why. Because all what God wanted to do, I was doing. But now when I look back, I know why God why God wanted me to take that decision. This is the kind of obedience that we must all as believers have. Those circumstances may not make sense. We have the confidence that God is always in full control. God is always in full control, beloved. We may not know what the future holds, but God knows. We may not know what tomorrow is. But we know the one who knows, holds what tomorrow is. So what is better? To know the one that who knows our future. Or we try to find out what our future is. I have told this, but the Spirit is reminding me, I quickly tell that testimony one month after I came to know the Lord. It's now 25 years to next January after coming to know the Lord in a personal way as a born again experience. I was in work in Italy and I had gone to this soothsayer in this, in this trade fair and that soothsayer said, everybody was going and she was telling about the future and everybody goes to look for the future and this lady said, somebody very powerful is in control of your life and your life will be okay, I don't have anything to say, a soothsayer after one month me giving my heart to Jesus. Who would have been dabbling in other spirits which I know now. Recognize who was in charge of my life. And one year after that my first vision was a spiral staircase. And the hand of God saying, do not fear, my hand will take you through. And one week, five, six days after that, I went through the central bank bomb blast. And the Lord's hand took me through. But it was not for the bomb blast. It was a confirmation who is in charge of my life. If my life, God is in charge in that way, I'm sure your life also, God is in charge in the same way. So we don't have to fear about the future. We don't have to doubt, to doubt about the future. And we need to move in a manner that we need to move in. obedience we must all have as believers. The third thing that we know is that Joseph was godly reverend. 
in God's name. I want you to turn to Luke 2 to read about two episodes in Jesus' life. You can go to Luke 2 in the Bible and read Jesus' life where Joseph is not specifically mentioned, but that clearly demonstrated another reason why God chose him to be Jesus' earthly father. And this is very important, beloved, to the fathers who are sitting here and to even the mothers and even to every pair. Luke 2 21. Yeah. And when eight days have passed before his circumcision, shall we read together? His name was then called Jesus. The name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of their purification according to the law of Moses was complete like a Hebrew, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer sacrifices according to what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Let's go to verses 39 to 41. Luke 2, 39-41. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city of Nazareth. The child continued to grow and become strong, increasing in wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. This reveal, verses reveal the godliness of this man called Joseph. Now godliness is serving God as head of home with an attitude where one considers the things and the people related to God with great respect. So we who are called, the fathers who are called to be the head of home, we need to understand that's what God would expect from every one of us. As the head of his home and family, Joseph took seriously the responsibility of training his eldest son in the ways and teachings of God. We see this in his obeying the law of circumcision and his yearly pilgrimages to Jerusalem, which was time consuming and expensive for a poor family. Traveling 70 miles was not easy for a poor family. Verse 40 tells us that Jesus grew strong physically through hard work alongside his father, as was the custom in those days. It also tells us that he grew wisely, mentally and emotionally, no doubt through the careful teaching and the example of his earthly father Joseph. This is why God gave him an earthly father in the first place, so that Jesus could learn to be a man as men are. Because Jesus was God, but he had to learn to be a man as men are. We have no recorded dialogues between Joseph and Jesus, but surely they spoke and surely Joseph taught his son in the morning and evening the things of God as good Jews were instructed to do. If you go home and read Deuteronomy 1, 18 to 20, uh, Deuteronomy 11, 18 to 21, you will know that. Every seventh day, the family was at the synagogue for worship. The Bible says this was Jesus' habit. This is said in Luke 4, 6, if you refer. A habit learned at early age and the example of his father. Because look, that Luke says, and, the, and his custom was, he went to the synagogue in, on the day of Sabbath. Do we give the synagogue, which is this assembly, priority on the day of Sabbath? Jesus' humanity, 
we see much of Joseph's pious character imprinted and this is why God chose him. So we always wonder why was Joseph chosen. But when you look at the life of Joseph in detail, we can put out some nuggets that brings us to the final lesson, number three. It takes courage and faith to obey God, beloved. It takes courage and it takes faith to obey God. Christianity is a way of life that demands a lot of courage and faith. Joseph had these quality, two qualities. However, we Christians are not called to do the easy things. We are called to do the right things. What are some worldly examples? My, my child is, is very good in, 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 in what you say, in, uh, in acting or in Shakespeare or whatever. But that person is not getting the lead role. So I want to befriend that, that person who is now doing the play. So by befriending the person, I am hoping my child will get, get the lead time. Or I will go and befriend the coach because I want my, my son selected to play in the big match. Nothing wrong. You're not writing. But you're not trusting God. That is different now. We know in businesses, sometimes to get a big order or a tender or something, we have to palm somebody's hand. Because you know, if we palm somebody's hand, I'm sure to get this million rupee value of business. What do I do? I do what is right before God. Or I give an excuse. No, no, you have given this business, so I want to get this. See, these are the challenges you and I will face as we walk with the Lord daily. This is what we need to bear in mind, beloved. The right choice in Joseph was to follow the instructions of God. Husbands, fathers, we have to be example for our children. Children will learn not what we teach them, but what our life demonstrates to them. It's not what we teach, it's our life that demonstrates to them. My wife is saying I'm at 37 minutes, so I'm going to finish soon. It's a good to have a time to keep in front of me. That's what matters. We are our children's role model, especially in the formative years. It is not so much the pastor or the church that lays the spiritual foundation for our children, and that's what a lot of us think. It is the pastor's duty and it is the it is the church's duty. No, it is the parents' duty to put that spiritual foundation for our children. And the children will learn from what we do. And how we do it is not what we teach. Jesus knew he had to be, he had to be on, we had to be on the Sabbath day. He did not learn it from anything, but he learned it from his earthly father beloved. If we don't respect God's commands and leave it out in our, ch our children, we'll do likewise. So early I can remember when Jerome was starting, there was hardly anybody in church and Jerome said they must be making cake, they must be doing this, they must be doing that. So that may be true, but the question is, what do we give priority? Do we give priority to God or do we give priority to our needs? And our needs could be simply making a cake or baking a cake on Sunday and missing the Sunday service or doing something that we want to do and, and missing the Sunday Sabbath day. But Joseph, did not do that beloved. Joseph kept the Sabbath and because Joseph kept the Sabbath, Jesus kept the Sabbath. And you may sometimes say, oh Jesus was the son of God, no beloved. The word of God tells us Joseph had two other children and those two children also were brought in the same way. The sons, two sons. One was James who was the head of the Jerusalem church and the other was Jude who brought the epistle of Jude. So it was not only Jesus, the, the Son of God, who followed the steps of his father, it was his other two sons also who came to a place of prominence because they learned from their father what, the, what should be done and is pleasing to God and kept the commandments of the Lord. So in conclusion, can the worship team come up? Have you looked at Joseph's life? There are two aspects that stand out below. Joseph forsook his ego by not stoning her. Rights by not being intimate with her until the child was born. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, 
take up your cross and follow me. And we have heard this and we have already, we sometimes we pray also. We say this, but what is it that denying yourself means? Denying yourself means, beloved, forsaking my ego. And what does it mean by taking up your cross? Taking up your cross means obedience to God and exercising my rights. And that's what Joseph did even before the cross came to break. He gave up his rights to do what God wanted him to do. This is what Joseph did and that is why God chose Joseph to be his son's earthly father. Beloved, it is God who has chosen you and me just as he chose Joseph to be a father or a role model to the spiritual children that we will birth or God intends to birth through us. Ego is me considering me first before God and we could think it is my right and most of the times even I have thought so. Ego is the biggest hindrance we all have. Ego will always try to justify why we don't live the commandments of the Lord and he will give an excuse. How many times we have given an excuse why we have not come for Sunday service? Just think a moment. It may be a very small thing. But it is not small in the eyes of the Lord. Because the Lord has said, keep the Sabbath. He has said, keep the Sabbath. And we need in all and humbly I'm saying, don't. Let us be people who will not miss that. Let us be people who reverentially honor God by keeping the Sabbath below. Ego is what created the downfall of Lucifer. Beloved, the greatest weapon Satan uses is inflating the ego of people that prevents them from walking and the narrow and the straight. And that's what happens, ego puffs us up. And when ego puffs us up, we can't go through the narrow and the straight. We, we don't, it, it, it is not comfortable. So we give some reason. Joseph forsook his ego and gave up his rights to do what was right in the sight of God. Beloved, God's planning for our lives is meticulous. Ephesians 1 4 says, For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight in love. So you and I were not chosen yesterday or today or the day we were born. We were chosen before creation, and God has a plan for you and for me, beloved. In this season of celebrating the birth of Jesus, be encouraged that God chose you before the creation for a purpose to live out in this time and this season in, this, in, the, in the country that he has placed us in. In every marriage, one may be called to play the sheep anchor role in your partner's star, role for the kingdom. Recognize what the Lord has placed in each other and partner that will complete the plans and purpose in each others life. Partnership is completing and not competing, beloved. We are to partner each other in assembly and not compete with each other in assembly. Because each one has a role and each one has something that God has that when we put together, God will bring the larger picture. Fitted together in a frame is what God will do in a family of God. So I don't need to compete with Jerome. Because Jerome will complete something that God has from what I started or vice versa. It may happen in that manner. So in summary, the three points we can take away from Joseph's life is to be, if you just take these three points, that would be enough. Be kind and merciful. A trait that he had learned in his trade of carpentry, since wood is the scarce, expensive, and carpenters have the axiom. How many have you ever heard? People from Muratua would have measured twice, cut once. Learn to proceed with caution, measuring the outcome of every action. Because every action has a reaction. We need to be cautious when we do things. Number two, humble and respect of God's commands. At a time of confusion and much uncertainty, simply obey God and put your trust in God and not in yourself. Because most times we put our trust in ourselves all the powerful people we may have around us or we may know. Beloved, no. Put 
put your trust in God. Because only God can bring to pass what God has for you and me. Thirdly and lastly, take courage and faith to obey God. Obeying God may look like very foolish act in the eyes of the world. But take courage and do what is right and not what is easy. I told you that when I had to take that decision to my friends, it would have been a very foolish act which I was not challenging. But I know that's what God wanted me to do with God. So today, let's ask the Lord to touch us and cultivate in us the characteristics of Joseph and make us a people who may walk in humility, obedience and godliness and be the role models that we are called to be for our family, to our church family and to the people or we call our Bible or whatever our community that could be. We are, you and I are called to be role models who respects and keeps the Sabbath. That is very important. Joseph is one who understood that his destiny is to serve another who has a great call from God. Sometimes we may have to also be loved. Now have you, how many of you have seen, I'm closing up now, you have all seen the Grammy Awards and everybody in the Grammy Awards is wanting to see who gets the best actor and the best actress award, am I right? That's the pinnacle, but don't forget there is also an award for the supporting actor and the supporting actress because that is also important. And Joseph was a supporting actor for what Mary was called to do to give birth to the Holy One, to the miraculous one. But Joseph had to play a role in, in nurturing and bringing that child up to a point of 30 years. It took 30 years before Jesus started his ministry. The Son of God had to be trained under his father for 30 years before God set him on ministry. And you and I sometimes will have to train whoever God brings us under us so that God can take that person. And when that person is ready, God will use him mightily in the ministry that God has for that person. And that is what you and I are called for, brother and sister. That is what we are called to be a Joseph who will nurture what God puts into us. Nurture the miraculous. The miraculous birth is the born again experience that any believer, any family member in our life has. And when that comes out, we have to nurture the person to a point that God can use that person in ministry for the glory of God. So today, I want to encourage you and I want to challenge you. Will you be that chosen? If you are, you may rise to your feet.